Hello and welcome to Nick. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to make the cute let's eat bib for my FNAF Chica. I love how this turned out. It's super cute, but also I love how the eyes turned out. So I cut these with my Cricut and I am in love with how even they are. This is a game changer for me. And I'm gonna be doing a video on how I did these specific eyes with my Cricut machine. Uh, I'm not sure how it would work on like a cameo or a silhouette or any of that other stuff. I have a Cricut maker and I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on how to make these specific eyes for the rest of all my FNAF guys. I fell in love with the eyes so much that I'm gonna be doing it with my Foxy, Freddy, and my Bonnie. But in today's tutorial, we're gonna be going over how to make this cute little let's eat bib. Let's go ahead and take it off and hit our camera, you know, for good luck. And I'll show you how this works. It's super cute and I apparently got attached to some polyfill along the way. For this project, you're going to need, again, like I said, the I Love This Cotton for the fruit salad color, 358. It's super nice. And honestly, I folded this into a ball and I still have, I've made two of these already and I still have this much left. So you do not need a lot for this specific one. I have a tutorial on how to make the chica, but that is again, linked down below for your viewing pleasure if you would like to see that there. You're also going to need a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my Burl's crochet hook and I'm in love with this one. Links down below. I don't know if you can still use the coupon discount code for that anymore. Things have changed so I'm not sure how that all works out. Also, I'm using fabric paint. You could also embroider this if you really wanted to. I'm lazy so I like to write it with my fabric paint and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna go about this. I'm hoping to make it a little bit more even on this go around with it. I'm also gonna be using a darning needle, just a little cheap darning needle, some sewing scissors. I have those from any craft store you can find them at. These were at Hobby Lobby and they're super cute. And also fastener dots. That is what I use to attach the tops to each other and I'm using hot glue to attach them, but you could sew them. You could, these are actually sticky all on their own. I just wanted to make sure this sucker was not going anywhere so that when I yanked on it and did that, it wouldn't go anywhere and would never come off again. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put a little slideshow of what this specific bib is. I have the printable PDF for uh, Chica linked down below. It's on Ravelry. Lovecraft has been kind of weird to me lately, so I haven't been putting things there. And I only put ones that I sell on Kindle, so there is that. So you can find this on Ravelry, linked down below. Gosh, I can't get over those eyes. Look at how perfect they are. So cute. So to start, we are going to essentially make some chains and a foundational stitch. And how we're going to do that is we're gonna create a slip knot. You're going to want to be comfortable with making a slip knot, chaining, half double crochets, and single crochets when it comes to this pattern, and also turning. I will explain how to do each of these in the way that I do it for this pattern, but generally you're going to want to be comfortable with those terms. So what I do, and the thing that I do that's a little bit different than what I usually do in of my other patterns, essentially, I hope that makes sense, um, is usually I wrap from left to right. I'm dyslexic and I learned that way, but I actually found out that's actually called an X stitch manner. So what we're going to do instead, if you're used to that and seeing that in my other tutorials, like for my Chica video, we are going to actually, instead of going left to right, we're gonna do it the actual correct way, which is from left to right. So left to right, and we're going to do one, two, chain 14, three, make them nice and loose, four, five, six, seven, not so loose that you can't like see a shape in them, but loose enough that you can get back inside of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Eek. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to work into the next couple stitches using a half double crochet. We're gonna go back inside of these loops. And so how we're going to do that is that we are going to take chain 13 and 14 and skip them. We're going to go into chain 12. So I'm going to do a half double crochet inside of the 12th chain that I created. We're gonna wrap from left to right, skip those two, trying to get into our 12th stitch, wrap from left to right, and for a half double crochet, it's different than a double crochet, we're gonna wrap again, 
And instead of just going through two, we're gonna go through all three of those loops. It creates a nice thick stitch that is kind of flat at the same time. We're going to then work a half double crochet in all of the remaining chains on our hook, essentially. So we're gonna go back in, half double crochet, half double crochet, and we're creating 12 half double crochets in this round, essentially. Half double crochet, and we go all the way down until we get to our very first chain that we made. Or our slip knot technically in that case, because the first slip knot kind of acts as your first chain for the way that I just did it anyway. My muscle memory wants me to go from right to left because of all my amigurumi that I've made. But trust me, this way looks a lot better when it comes to your final product. So wrap and turn, wrap and turn. No, we only went halfway through that. We split it. All right. So now this is going to try to be open, but I'm going to close him. Don't worry about this tail. We will work him in later. But for right now, we're going to chain one and then turn our work. And we're going to work 12 half double crochets across this way as well. So we're not skipping anything other than the chain that we just made. We're going to wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, not drop our stitch. There we go. Wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, and go down the entire way on the other side. And essentially, what we're doing here is we're creating the height for our bib. And I do this going back and forth eight times more than what I have right now. I end on an even number in that way. I can just work on my single crochets when it comes to the little, I don't know how to call them, the little, what is the little part here on the bib called? The, the smock? I don't know, this is the smock, so what are these, like the handles? I'm not entirely sure what I should call it, but essentially we're creating the height until we can get to that part and just going back, I just did it from the back way, wrap, left, wrap, left, there we go. And we're gonna do that the entire way down until we get it to the height that we want. It will look lovely. And we're going to just keep chaining and turning until we get it to the length that we want for all 12 stitches. And now we're on our final stitch for this row. This is number 12, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, and again, chain and turn. And this makes it much smoother than if I were to do it the X stitch formation. I don't know why, it's much flatter this way. This is where we are on our bib. We're gonna go around one, two, three, four, five, six more times. And then once we've done our repetition for a total of eight times, we'll come back and I'll show you how I do the handles. I'm going to do this again, basically do what I did four times over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'll be right back. Keep turning, chaining and turning, chaining and turning, going back and forth. Be right back as soon as that's done. All right, so now we've gone around eight times, back and forth, back and forth. And what we're going to go on here from is we're going to do another chain and turn, but this time we're going to keep going from left to right, but we're going to single crochet across the next three stitches. So that's three rows, and then we're going to chain and turn and repeat. So one, two, three. And we're going to again, chain, turn, one, two, three, and we are continuing on chaining and turning, and we're gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth until we get it to the length that essentially we want. And that, for me, 
was another eight times. I matched it. But if you find that you don't think it's long enough to get around your neck, you can do less, you can do more of your stitches around. So I'm going to go back and forth eight times until this is the length that I wanted. Then I slip stitch off and I'll show you how I attach on this side to make the second side and then how I go around to flatten it all off and finish that off. Be right back as soon as I get that side done and I'll show you how I attach on that side. All right, so I misspoke, but I already put a little thing up. I'm sure future editing Cody will. Uh, basically, you go around 12 times. I don't know why I said eight in the last one. I am on this row now and I'm on the 12th row and I'm going to slip stitch off like so and I'm going to leave a decently long tail so that I can hide it later we're gonna pull that off like that just let it kind of linger and sit there and so now what we need to do is we're going to replicate that exact same situation where we go back and forth across three stitches but we're going to do it on here instead so I take my crochet hook and I put it into the third stitch from the last so one two and then three what I'm going to go from here is we're going to take and make a nice long tail and I'm going to slip stitch it on like so and then I'm going to single crochet across one go into the next one two and the last one three and then we resume basically so chain one turn do the single crochets one two three and we're going to chain and turn we're going to repeat so that these are the same length so that's the end goal is you're going to have 12 rows for this as well but we are not going to slip stitch off i'm going to show you what we do instead as soon as we get to that point i'm going to go around for a couple more rounds going back and forth and then i'll show you where we go from after that make your two sides match and i'll show you what we do right after we do that be right back all right so now these two match and i've got strings pretty much going crazy everywhere and what i like to do is i'm going to just single crochet along the sides down the side here up here go back along all along the bottom and going up the top whenever i can i get a tail going along inside of my work and that's how i hide them so i'll show a little bit of that so here on this corner on the corners i like to do a corner increase so i like to put three stitches within my little corners here and then along the side we're going to go in and just kind of stab in wherever it'll fit like so and just kind of keep going like that there will be a little bit of a hole right there go into the side of your next one oh or drop your stitches all together that's the same thing go right there pick up and wrap and you just keep going down so we're going to go into the middle of this next one I like to go into the sides of each of the rows that I went, but I know that I kind of skip every once in a while because it's too... Oh, I wrapped right there, so let's fix that actually. When I wrap on my borders, I, I tend not to do it when I'm actually working on my work itself, but if I do it on like an edge, I want to fix it <laughs> very much. Oh, there we go. And there, I want to show how I pick up my stitches and how I hide them. I keep wanting to grab from left to right instead of right to left. There we go. I can think of words. So here on this little corner here, this is not technically a like corner corner. It's more of just like a turning in the corner. So I won't do that. However, I have this string that I need to hide. I'm going to run it the entire way where I pick it up and I just work it as if it is a piece of my stitch. I want to go through the... Oh going to go through there like that go inside go inside next one wrap wrap and I'm just working it as if it is a piece of that same stitch essentially and now that I've run it back through like a good inch I'm gonna run that to the back and just let that kind of just settle there like so 
And now I'm gonna go into here, go into this, and wrap, and I just keep going down my sides and hide my tails as I go. Around this corner, I will put a corner increase, corner increase, go down here, corner increase, and corner increase along those as well. So I'm gonna go down and I'm going to pick up all these uh, tails as I go and kind of hide them. I'm gonna work them in for about an inch and a half or however long I really have the patience to do it. Typically I do it for at least an inch and a half. And then I will show you what the end product is essentially and how I end up using the fabric paint. You can also embroider, oh, I skipped a stitch. See, if you skip too far, it looks funky. So you don't wanna skip too, too many. You wanna to try to go into the sides of every row, otherwise you end up with a hole and it does not look good. So I'll show you what it looks like. Why are you not picking up? It's because my crook is, my hook, my hook is crooked. There we go. Crooky, hooky, hooky, hook. Anyway, I will show you what it looks like to do the paint and how I attach the, um, the, the, the dot fasteners with my glue gun. I'm going right now to this corner and this is the hole, this little stitch area that I typically put the corner increase, which is where you put three stitches inside of your corner here. We'll let that one go and then I will go up into this one right here and try to shove my hook through it. There we go. And we're going to put one, two, and three. Go into the middle one and call that a one. And then go into this one right here because there's only three stitches on it. One, turn the corner, two, and then now you're on the other side, three. And that's why it's called turning the corner. We're grabbing our tail and working it as if it is a piece of our work again. And I will be right back as soon as I go down this side and hide all of my tails. I'll show you how I fasten off, how I do the let's eat, and how I do the dot fasteners. Be right back. Look at how nice that looks with the corners. All right, so we've gone around all the corners and I realized I didn't do corner stitches up here on this one, but I actually think I like the corners to be a bit more square than what I did over here. This is cute, but I like the square. But if you don't like the square, just do one stitch in each corner instead of doing the corner uh, increase like I said earlier. So if that's not something you're into, you don't have to do it. However, I like how it looks. So I'm going to do a corner stitch on my final increase here. So we're going to be, this is my corner, one, two. And when I finish off, I don't actually do the third. What I instead do is go into the stitch right here. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a slip stitch without splitting my yarn, preferably. There we go. And I still think that looks just as square. It looks nice. I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually pull it through, make it look nice and taut, pull that through the back and then through the other side as well to make it nice and flat, like so. And then I'm gonna take my darning needle. This is where my darning needle comes in. My yarn is all done. I cut off all my other tails after I hid them in. So now all I need to do is hide this tail. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna work it through the back stitches of my single crochets from this border that I did. It's a little bit hard, but basically I just try to weasel it in through the backs of these stitches. And I weasel it for about an inch and a half to two inches so that I can just hide it. Oh, come on. There we go. Here we are. So there's these little V's on the backs of your stitches. That's where I work it through and I kind of just tug it every once in a while without tugging it too much and apparently get polyfill everywhere. There we are. So let's work it through the center of this V, and then this V. If you try to do too many at once, and then you fail and you glitch out, then it will be not fun. But I believe in myself. I think I can do it. All right, come on. Try to get it through the center because if you don't get it through the center, then it goes through the front and that's not hiding it. It's just shoving it through the front side. So I try really hard to get it through the center of the stitch 
because otherwise if you can see your darning needle on the opposite side you're not getting it through the center of the stitch so that's not what you want but we're gonna keep putting it down and then down like that that's about an inch and a half it's nice and hidden now so we're gonna take our scissors cut that and what I like to do from here is first I'm going to attach my fasteners these have uh, fabric glue already kind of on the backs of them they're super sticky will not come off so I'm going to just attach those if you are super duper paranoid that they are going to come off you can hot glue them I like hot gluing on the ones that I get from the other place that's why those are hot glued on but what I like to do is I'll take whatever side it does not super duper matter and I'll put one along the front here and that's not coming off not unless i really want it to and then i take this one and i go along the back of the opposite side that way they can go across each other like so i also have a tendency to try to pull on my strings here this took a lot of tugging and kind of making it work this doesn't always like to stick but there we are that is the bib itself you can put whatever you want on it if you just want to put FNAF or whatever else you want to put on your bib however I'm going to maintain the let's eat so I'm going to re-angle my camera there you go bouncing it for good luck and bouncing it for more good luck there we go so now that I've changed my camera angle wow I've gotten really tan <laughs> I've been subbing and I've been outside all the time so my hands have just been getting super duper tan so here's what I like to do when I'm doing this so that I can space it out properly I want the eat to be centered and I want the let's to be up here so what I'm going to do is we're going to put the L on this side and I'm trying to make it big without making it too big so I put the L over here try to make it nice and bubbly and then go across. Oh, don't do that. I can always extend that L just a little bit later. I'm gonna do this for right now. And then I'm gonna put the S over here and try to space it out better than I did on my previous one. Try to space that out and try to make it bubblier without it being too obnoxious. I suck at fabric paint, but I also suck at a lot of the other stuff that could make letters. So you could actually probably cut it out with fab uh, felt too and glue those on or just attach your own. So I'm gonna put that there and we're gonna add the E and the T. I did that so that I could space it out evenly. So that way they're both the same amount apart. That could have been way better. Whatever, they're all unique in their own way. Little monster letters. And I'm gonna probably fast forward a little bit. Let's, and then here I'm gonna put the E like kind of in the middle of the L and the E on the upper one. And I'm making it all capital letters just to make it nice and easy for me, trying to smooth out my edges. That actually worked really well, trying to hold this as steady as I can to move that so that it went with it. That worked really well, actually. All right, so let's make a T right here. And that's pretty much it. I don't think that looks awful, awful. The E and the T could have been way better on the top part there. I might add a little bit more thickness to this L. Oh, don't do that. That would be such a shame. I'd have to do it all over again. So let's add a little bit more meat to that. But other than that, I'm actually fairly happy with that. I'm going to let that dry overnight. It's way thicker than the other one. 
but it gives it character, right? So that is pretty much it when it comes to my uh, bib for Chica. Stay tuned for the rest of the FNAF, guys. I love how this series is turning out. I am in love with those eyes, so I think my next video is going to be how to do animated eyes with your Cricut. You can also just straight up cut these, but I think that the Cricut made these just so perfect. I used hot glue and some of that like stiffer felt. It looks great in my opinion and I think that would be uh, something that you can do for, it has many applications. You could use it for other amigurumi just generally. I think she's so stinking cute and you wouldn't even know that she's a scary character and if you're still intimating to make it more creepy you could still go with the traditional crochet eyes that I did that are oddly unsettling. I just, I can't, I can't. But for the rest of my amigurumis for the Five Nights at Freddy's characters for the Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy, I'm going to be doing those eyes. So our next video is going to be how to make these with the Cricut and or how to cut them out basically. You probably could get some of those little cut felt punchers that you can find there too. I liked it with the Cricut because I finally made use of my Cricut maker and I'm in love with how these eyes turned out. Anyway, next video, how to do that. I'm also gonna be working on Keo from Fruits Basket. I am in love with how the season and the series all on its own is ending. So I'm gonna be working on a flat cat version of Keo and showing how to make the face. I might also use the Cricut on that. So that might be in the next video a little bit too. I will see how that goes goes it's super cute and i love how it's turning out i love the entire series so if you've not watched fruit basket the the final like there's three seasons of it now and they're way more true to the manga and it's a really older manga that's shoujo and i love it it's so much fun so if you're interested in that let me know i'm also working on some stuff from coco melon and i know that's completely different from fnaf from fnaf but stay tuned for that uh, we have a Patreon if you want to help support us over there. You get early access to tutorials and other stuff like that. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell. It does help us so much. We just got to 50,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowing. I can't get over it. Hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this and be on track to see all the rest of the FNAF characters. And until next time, guys, bye!